Um, also, here, something I want to mention here. I even check later on. You'll see me even check the controls. Uh, I like is dashing like and running like whatever it's called uh, an unlockable like ability or something because I pressed um, the buttons for it and nothing changes. I've pressed them. Uh, I've pressed and held them. I've pressed them in midair. I've pressed and held them in midair. Uh, nothing changes. So oh, this is where it bounces. I don't know. Um, so what what's going on there? I, do, I don't know. Um, but something I learned while playing this game is that it's pretty when you're fighting a boss. It's pretty much just you just chucking, just going into the battle again and again and again and again until you win. Um, and it uh, yeah. It is challenging, and it, uh, I wouldn't say the most fun thing. Like I don't, I'm not saying that it's bad, but I'm just saying that going, you know, fighting the same boss again and again and again, and just memorizing its attack patterns, um, to me is not the most fun thing. But you, yeah, you can see me here, like, just like, how do you run or dash or whatever? Anyway, um, to me, it isn't the most fun thing, but it, I cannot deny it is really, um, oh, what's the word? Satisfying when you do finally, um, when, when you do finally beat the boss, um, and you just, like, um, you know, you just kill him, you win, you get money, and uh, yeah. Hold on, I'm just gonna do something here quickly. Be back in a minute. Yeah, just edited out um, me just looking through the controls so that because it wasn't really, you know, you're just looking at a screen, it's like, yeah, just, yeah. Just need to edit a bit out. Um, so, yeah, you, it is gratify, gratifying when you, uh, um, gratifying when you do beat the boss after X amount of tries. Um, but, yeah, uh, if you, if you do like that kind of uh, style, just like, um, just jumping headlong into a boss battle and just doing it again and again and again until you win, then uh, this game you will like this game but if you if you don't like that kind of gameplay style then uh, yeah you're not gonna like this game because a lot of this is just trying again and again and again, and again until you win um and again that's not necessarily bad uh, um it's just um ah, not the most fun thing in the world to do um, something I would suggest while fighting these bosses is putting on a YouTube video or a podcast or whatever, just uh, or music, uh, something to listen to in the background while fighting these bosses um, uh, to make it uh, to make the. Um, the grind, you could say, just like, you know, just to make it a bit less repetitive and a bit more enjoyable. Um, oh yeah, I was surprised by this next bit. Ah, uh, yeah, a bunch of bugs. I was like, God damn it! Die, 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 die. Yeah, and at this point, I did not realize that you can just press and hold A to recover. Still, uh, like I mentioned earlier, so. Yeah, it was a bit, a bit stupid. Um, yeah, gonna come up on a new character in a minute. So again, if you want to pause the video and read his dialogue, you can. Um, but yeah, just gonna go past it. Um, also, if anybody knows how to get up on that ledge, uh, if it's not too big of a spoiler, because it doesn't appear that I can just jump up there normally, and I got killed by a normal enemy because I was only on one, on one HP. Yeah, damn it. 
Um, so, yeah. Uh, um, uh, I don't know if, um, you know, they were, I'm just like doing it wrong or whatever, but yeah, that's just how the game seems to me. It's just like you just try and try and try again until you win. Um, mind you, at least it's not like the um, new Super Mario Bros. game uh, where, um, you know, the original one on NES, where you would, um, when you ran out of one-ups, you would just uh, start from the beginning again. Unless you knew um, the trick with the uh, Cooper shell to get 99 uh, one. 99 one ups and then at that point you might as well if you're on the virtual console you might as well just use the time rewind feature because it's not like you're ever going to run out of 99 lives so um oh yeah uh talking about the rewind feature featuring virtual console and in um the NES and SNES Classic, which I do actually have. Uh, they're sat right underneath my TV right now, alongside the 3DS, DS, Lite, uh, 3DS, XL, PSP, a Orange Pie that I have, a Game Boy, a GBA, and you know, just a bunch of stuff. Um, it, I do have them, and a lot of people, well I wouldn't say, I don't know for sure a lot of people, I do know like, um, people, I can't remember who it was, but someone said on Twitter, and I do know Sakurai doesn't like the idea that, um, you can just like, use the rewind fun function to undo a mistake that you made, but, I think that was a good idea by Nintendo, because, um, the p times have changed since the NES and SNES era. Back back then, you uh, would uh, get uh, a game and then play that game for a weekend or so. Like, you know, so they were designed to last as long as possible. So they would, artif I would say somewhat artificially inflate the difficulty um again like mario would if you uh, one ups you'd have to start all the way from world one one but if it just made it made you start from the beginning of the world that you was in then it would be significantly easier and even back then one ups and extra lives were an outdated mechanic that was a relic from um the what are they called? The fucking um, arcades from the arcade machines. <laughs> because because in the arcade machine, arcade machines came before the home consoles, and the, um, what the arcade machine, you know, arcade machines, you put a, you put um, money in to play the game, and to stop you from just like beating the entire game with a penny, you know. A, in America it would be quarter, in England it was probably 20p or 50p or you know, whatever um, amount of money you would put in um, to stop that from happening because then they would make a lot of money they added the mechanic of lives uh, so that whenever you ran out lives you would have to put more money in to keep on playing and uh, but do you get what I'm saying here you don't have uh, to put money into the NES or SNES or any home console to continue playing the game so um, at that point in time um, lies were an outdated mechanic um, and uh, with Mario Odyssey and um, and like Breath of the Wild, but I don't know if the Legend of Zelda game really, no, the Legend of Zelda game never really had the lives uh, so far I know um, with Mario Odyssey and like um, Sonic Forces abandoning abandoning um, lives 
um, it just goes to show how much of an outdated mechanic it is because those games are relatively speaking difficult uh, um, even without like one-ups and uh, the everything because you don't need uh, extra lives to make a game difficult you don't need to start the person uh, all the way from the start of the game every time they die every five times they die um unless they one up unless they use a one up grinding me method um because that's just uh, not you know fun or necessary i mean sure it'll make your game last uh, uh, make uh, your game harder to beat and all that but it's just like but then people are just going to get really, really good at the first, like, five... Uh, if they get stuck... Say I get stuck on the sixth level of Mario. And it, uh, um, I keep on having to replay one through five. I'm going to get really good at levels one through five. So much, that so much so that they're not fun to me to play through anymore. And then I might not have beaten six. Or I might have beaten six and then gotten stuck on eight or nine. And yeah, what I'm saying here is just like it just makes the game more of a slog for sometimes to just complete when you're having to replay uh, the first handful of levels every so often because you get stuck on a level. Um, and that, uh, again, that conflicts with like how games are now today because now, because back then there weren't that many people making games, it was only like. Nintendo and Sega and Atari really making game big game companies. There weren't that many third parties, but nowadays we have fit a lot more third parties and we have a lot more indie developers. So we don't want our games to last forever anymore. We want them to be quality over quantity. We want them to be a fun experience, whether or not it's a long experience, we just want it to be fun, get it done with, done and over with, uh, you know, enjoy it, and then move on to the next one. Like, yes, some games are shorter, um, some games have been said to be too short and leave you wanting more, but I'd rather be left wanting more than not wanting any at all, any more at all, and you know, just getting bored of the like, fact no, I'm not even wanting to play the game again because, again, I'm just so good at the first few levels, it's like, it, it's just like, I, I just get, it just wouldn't be that fun and I, I, just, until I get. You so say, you get what I'm saying here, it's just like, it's not ri like, it, it was fine back, again, it was fine back during the NES era and a a SNES era. Um, but ultimately it doesn't really fit today, today's like kind of gaming scene because they, they're just two different beasts now, like gaming is now more lucrative than movies, than music, so it's just a lot so, but back during the NES and NES era, it was nowhere near as lucrative as movies and music. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, this is how I... Oh no. Did I not? Oh no, what did I speed up? Oh. Yeah, it's better because I went to the shops just so you could just see. Uh, pause and see what all the new items are. And it, um... Yeah. I do believe this is where I, where I just like, yeah, I've, the, uh, I think I've wa I walked to the boss and then got killed by it, the next boss and got killed by it, so I was like, yeah, well I'm stuck and it, uh, um, I've, there's this boss there, so what I'm going to do is grind, and to be honest, that hit, uh, from all my years of playing Pokemon, that is pretty much my instinct now, is that if I'm stuck on something, just grind, and then grind some more, just keep on grinding, just grind for a couple hours, then you'll be able to beat it. Um, that's the uh, mentality Generation 2, uh, the Gen 2 games installed in me, and Gen 4. Because Cynthia 
gave me no end of trouble. Um, so yeah, I that's I don't know when that's gonna start. I think that's gonna start. Oh, wow, still got a bit of a way to go. The last stars actually. Wow. Okay, so yeah. Um. Once the grinding starts, I think I'll make that its own uh, little episode and just be like grinding episode. Just like this is the episode where I just grind and grind and grind to get to buy some of the uh, cheaper items in the shops. In the shop, just to make this a little bit easier on me. Um, mind you, there wasn't anything that much that made it that easier. Oh, anyway, um, it's just so. Um, yeah, I just got everything I could. Just in case I needed it, some. Partly. Um. But yeah. Ah, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, I, I think I've officially run out of things to think about. Uh, well, in a virus, um, guess why not? There's something that's going on, and I've run out of everything else to talk about pretty much, so I might as well talk about the coronavirus. Um, so here in the UK, um, I don't, uh, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but coronavirus has been taken seriously because it's infected and killed a good number of people. I think. Uh, I can't, I don't want to guess because I'm just gonna get a bunch of people on comments just like, no, you got it wrong. Uh, spreading misinformation, and that, but it's infected a good few people um, and killed uh, a. Killed less, but still a lot of people. Um, and it, uh, um, currently, the restrictions are there's a travel ban, so that if um, if you and somebody else that's not in the same household as you are traveling in a car together, then you can get pulled over and fined. Um, they discourage any um, non-essential uh, travel. Um, and yeah, pretty much just locked down. Um, and I do think um, it is coming either fourth or the fourth, um, which actually works both in American and British um, dates. But yeah, um, you know, uh, I do think by May they will at least have started easing up on the restrictions because um, I don't think the coronavirus pandemic will be over um, I still think the coronavirus will still be around and I still think it'll be you know something the government will be yeah, concerned about but I do not uh, but I do think they'll start easing up and try and get more people back to work um, because if they don't, then the economy is going down the shit. Will go down the shitter, and it, uh, um, that's something that you know they will want to try and avoid. So I think they'll uh, ease up on it. I don't think all of the restrictions will go away. I think they'll um, dis. I don't think you'll be fine uh, for um, like uh, being in the same car as a met fam uh, as someone who's not in. The the same household as you, and um, because some people need to carpool to work or whatever. Uh, but I do think that they will still um, encourage self isolation and uh, emphasize that you know, uh, this does not mean that you can go out and party. This me, this is just uh, us getting people, start getting people back to work so the economy does not suffer any more than it already has. Um, 
and we still encourage people to self-isolate and to wash their hands and to protect themselves and their families. But I do not believe that they'll ease upon the demographics that are more susceptible to Corona. Um, I do believe that any uh, elderly people or anybody will be um, will not be they will not be as lackadaisical with them and will probably just be continue on with like yeah you need to stay home do not you know and then if they probably make it so that if anybody over X age or ha has uh, has <sighs> no um, health issue so uh, with breathing cannot to, you know, you you know, you shouldn't be out, and that you know, you get fined if you are out or something like that. But I do believe by the end of May, by the not the end of May, I think by the beginning of May, they'll start easing up. Um, but again, this is just my um, predictions. I do not know um, exactly what will and won't happen. I could be completely wrong, I could be completely correct, I have no bloody idea. Um, but what I do know is that the economy can t um, survive a shutdown for long because I think it's by like four weeks of the shutdown, 33% um, of businesses will go bankrupt. That's not going to be good for the year. Uh, economy and then it's just and it's not going to get any better from there and the banks aren't helping because yes the, the government has uh, um, approved funding for a business loan to help businesses get through this but still the banks are um, being just absolute assholes and just like not make, basically making it as difficult as possible to get a loan um, and I do think the government needs to reel in the banks. Uh, like, they need to just like go to the banks and like, you stop it. Just stop. Or we'll be forced to take some sort of action. I don't know what the government could possibly do to the banks to make them stop. But they need to do something because they're not helping at all. Um. And their inaction is only going to um, cause um, more trouble. Anyway, I do believe we are coming up on the grinding, the bit where I'm starting to grind. I think this is actually the me starting grinding, so I must have missed that. Anyway, um, oh no, I'm still exploring, sorry. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Um also I don't know how recent this is, but uh, apparently it's now come out that um coronavirus is not airborne but it is spread through like moist moisture like this your spit and everything. Um which uh is better than it being airborne because that means like a woolen scar around your nose and mouth it won't protect you completely but it'll do more a lot more than if it was just airborne um the but the downside is now this means that the coronavirus can now travel further than if it was airborne um so yeah um yeah so here's the second boss um, at least a second one I thought I can remember. Um, and uh, the, yeah, I died. Uh, it is a big guy. <sighs> oh. oh, I don't know, I've been so tired the past couple of days. Um, but yeah, so. He was a bit of a pain. Also, I kept on falling into that pit and I don't know why. So, uh, anyway. Um, 
What was I saying? Yeah, big guy. He, yeah. Uh, he has a couple of phases. The first phase um, is pretty standard. He just jumps around and uh, hits you with a hammer. And if he, like, chat, holds it back before slamming into the ground, it'll send out a shockwave. Um, just like the like small smaller guys that look similar to him, like one and one that's like guarding his the entrance to his area. Um, so yeah, he does that. Um, and then like the second phase, I don't know if there's a third phase, but I do know there's a second phase. And in the second phase, um, uh, rocks start dropping from the, from the ceiling. And the, the, um, his attacks can now make the, uh, the rocks drop from time to time, and his attacks can make rocks drop as well. Um, so yeah, it's starting to beat him, uh, beating him by uh, at the time of recording this uh, voice. So you know this, but um, yeah. Hopefully, next recording session I can beat him. Um, so yeah. Also, something I was thinking about um, is uh, maybe recording the uh, the voiceover, you know, this part in like two halves um, just to make it be easier on me because my throat is really dry and I've not even uh, and I've edited this down a bit, so I'm not even uh, talking for the entire time that I've uh, recorded. Um, yeah, but yeah. So, being as I've run out of things to talk about to do with video games, um, yeah. politics in general, um, I've been watching The Crown on Netflix. And I've absolutely been loving it. Um, like I am a bit of a history nerd myself. I do love um, like history movies. Like Darkest Hour is probably one of my favourite movies of all time. Um, and The Crown on Netflix. Um, oh, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, it bas it's basically about um, you know the. It starts off. Just before the Queen's father dies, uh, um, and it, uh, uh, it goes uh, through everything um, from after his death to the Queen's coronation, and then um, I don't, I can't remember what I'm up to. Like, I do believe um, the Queen's husband has just been. Found a prince um, because he was upset that, that his own son outranked him. Um, but yeah. Um, Sam. So. Yeah, also, I can't remember his name. David. Yeah, it goes David Tennant, then Matt Smith. Yeah, so his name is Matt Smith, isn't it? He plays the Queen's uh, husband. Uh, I can't remember his name because I'm really bad at names. Um, and uh, I love, uh, I did like him in Doctor Who, but I prefer him in this, to be honest, because I think the more dr dramatic, I think he does, uh, I think he is better at the more dramatic stuff than he is with the. Doctor and the, the Doctor is a bit more silly than dramatic most of the time. Like, um, one of my favourite moments in his uh, um, era of the Doctor was when uh, the Daleks were pretending, you know, pretending to be Ironsides in World War Two, and then um, and then he was just uh, uh, whacking one of the Daleks with a giant like wrench thing set go. I am the Doctor, and you are the Daleks, and it's just like, oh, that was one of the best moments of his uh, uh, eras of the Doctor. Just like that, that moment where he's just like attacking the Dalek, just yelling at it. Um, 
got from obviously like trauma from the time war um, and that was just absolutely brilliant I loved that too bad uh, any uh, uh, assemblance of that doctor was erased later on in the series where there was like um, where we found out there was a Dalek death camp you got pulled in front of uh, the uh, Dalek uh, um, like Supreme Council or whatever it was where there's like a ton of Daleks and he and he didn't even blink when uh, when it was mentioned that there was a Dalek death camp like the da the doctor that was in that episode with uh, um, hitting the Dalek with the wrench do you think that is the same doctor who will not even blink at the mention of a Dalek death camp no that if that doctor heard of uh, the da Daleks having a death camp he would have gone in his TARDIS freed everybody from the death camp and destroyed the death camp and probably the planet that I was on unless the planet meant something that and that that is one of the things that I really hated about his run as, as a doctor like they could have done so much with the doctor in that from that episode just like you know they could have really shown him progressively just like not you know, just uh, when they're, you know, go lashing out in mage at whenever there's a Dalek around. But no, absolutely no character progression. It's like, uh, it's just like one minute, I hate you, you are my enemy and I am yours. To, oh, Dalek death camps, whatever, don't give a shit. Like, seriously, those two, uh, those two doctors are not the same doctor. In my opinion, like, there was a doctor that was at the beginning of that series, and then there was a doctor about. I don't know, I couldn't tell you pinpoint when that doctor became another doctor. Uh, the 12th doctor became 12.5, well, technically 11 regenerated into itself. Well, you know what I mean. Where he basically changed without regenerating, like he was almost a completely different person. Um, but he could do some of the more dramatic stuff. I just couldn't really. He couldn't really do the energetic or heartwarming stuff. Really, he oh, that was de know, definitely something the Eleventh Doctor was a lot better at doing. Um, like it's not like he couldn't do it, but he just wasn't as good as his predecessor. And I will always prefer the Eleventh Doctor. Like the Eleventh Doctor was just so much better at like the emotional uh, scenes, and uh, you know, the writing was better, um, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, he was just. You know, in my opinion, he was just better. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, just, just, just better at that kind of stuff. But I definitely, and he could definitely hold his own. Uh, the eleventh Doctor could definitely hold his own with the dramatic scenes. Like he was, he he was good uh, at the dramatic scenes. Like he really had a demanding presence. Um, when he. Uh, I can't remember <sighs> what the episode is called, but the episode with the Titanic in space, where um, they go, and why are we, you know, who are you, why are you supposed to, why are we supposed to follow you, and it's like, I'm the Doctor, because I'm the Doctor, uh, it's like, that was a really good scene, and that, it, that was really cool, um, and it, I think it's scenes like that, that, that I wouldn't say the uh, 12th or 13th Doctor lacked at all, 14th though, she really lacks those kind of scenes. Like, there is that one scene where they went back in time and uh, to see me, the girl's like grandmother when she was young. And then there was the marriage. The marriage scene was good, but for the most part, she just lacks any real presence. Like, she, a lot of, like, if you would have shown, shown me, like, footage from her, from those Doctor Who episodes where where from some of them where she's supposed to be demanding on the screen like where where she's supposed to be where she's supposed to take you know grab your attention if you showed me then before knowing that she was ever going to be the doctor i would have told you that she's just a side character 
She does not ha have the commanding presence to be the doctor, but she does have the heart. And th that's what that episode really does well, the heart. She has the heart of the doctor, but she does not have the presence. She does not command uh, um, respect like the other doctors did. Like, yes, um, 13 could be a bit childish at times. <laughs> Um, and egotistical, but he was still he still demanded respect. He still demanded your attention. And uh, while I have some major flaws with like, like him shooting and killing anybody, Time Lord or no, the Doctor killing somebody is very. You have to have a fucking good reason for the doctor to kill anybody right I and that's what uh, and that's why they had to have the master in the 11th in the 11th in the 11th run like basically zap um the president back through the portal because the doctor wouldn't have done that he wouldn't have like been able to kill the president but um the master he's fucking insane of course he's gonna uh, at least try and kill um him um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, doesn't it hack back onto the uh, crown, crown series? It doesn't have the best Winston Churchill. The best Winston Churchill still goes to. Um, still goes to Darkest Hour. Um, and I think that's the same actor that they have in um, Doctor Who, actually. I think. Don't quote me on that, but I... Yeah, because I haven't seen that episode in a while, but I think it's the same from what I remember. Actor, or at least close enough to fool me, so if it's a different actor, then consider the one from Doctor Who second best. Um, and then the one from The Crown, third best, but it is still a good um, Churchill, Winston Churchill. Um, I definitely did enjoy every moment Winston Churchill was on screen. Um, and, it, yeah. Um, yeah, and you just learn a lot about the royal family and what was going on around that time. Like, again, I wasn't around that time. I'm only 21 at the recording this. And it, uh, I wasn't around back then to like see, see or listen to the news and experience this. So, yeah. Oh, something I just remembered about the game that is mildly frustrating is the jump button. Um, so, in most games like Mario, you jump and, you know, you have uh, you have a basic jump. You know, no matter how long you press that button for, you're always going to jump the same height. Um... But you know, you have like different jumps. So you have side jump, side side jumps. You have uh, wall jumps. You have long jumps, and um, you know you have different jumps to, to get around places, and you know you have different ways to get to places. You couldn't do, couldn't do it with a normal jump. You have triple jumps as well. With this, you have if you tap the button, uh, jump button, you only go so far. You don't go as far as if you press and hold it. Which can be a little bit um, for, uh, annoying sometimes uh, when you're like me and you're used to just pressing the A button um, and then, you know, that being your jump. Um, so yeah, that could be a bit of a learning curve, curve if you are used to games like Mario and Sonic. Well, actually, I think Sonic actually has kind of the same, like, but I think he... I've, don't quote me on this, but I think in Sonic games, I don't know how many, but I think there are some Sonic games where uh, how high you jump is dependent on how lo long you press the button down. Ooh. Anyway. Oh, and this is where I've started grinding I, by the looks of it. So yeah, I'll um, I'm going to sort this out now. <laughs>